do we need to hire a recruiter to help our son or daughter earn an athletic scholarship to college? Um, the simple answer is it depends, right? And I know you probably want something a little, you know, more, you want me to expand on that, but it, honestly, it depends, right? Now, this is something that I do, right? So I don't want it to be self-serving and say, of course you got to hire a recruiter. Uh, because one thing I do want to make clear, though, I don't believe I'm a, a recruiter because the recruiter is somebody who actually claims to have connections and they can reach out to schools and coaches on your behalf and, and all that. I'm more of a consultant. I am a coach, right? I provide information to families. I give you strategies on how to become a recruited athlete. I think there's a big difference, right? So I'm more of a coach. Think of it if you have... You know, uh, uh, um, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a consultant that you work with that helps you grow your business, right? Maybe you have an accountant or uh, if you are a, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you may hire a personal trainer, right? My relationship is directly one-on-one -on -one with the families um, through my, you know, coaching, consulting services. Um, but then I also, I lend a hand directly to the schools, the athletic departments, the teams by doing workshops um, and so forth. And that's what You Recruit You is all about. We help families, you know, take control of the, the college recruiting process. But we make it very clear that ultimately you are responsible for doing the work. We just provide you with the know-how. We provide you with the strategies to do it. So I wouldn't lump myself personally in the recruiter space. Um, I think it's I think it's definitely separate uh, when you are a strict consultant, coach, you know, advisor, accountability coach, if you will. Because part of what I do is I hold the families, particularly the student athletes, accountable for you know the playbook, the the game plan that we outline them. Right? I can give you a plan, but if you don't execute it, well, then does you no good. Right, so I say it depends. Do you need to hire a recruiter? For one, I'll just say this: if if your son or daughter um, is a you know five star recruit, <laughs> you don't need to hire someone like me. You don't need to hire a recruiter. Um, you know, don't go joining platforms that you know that say they're going to promote you. All that. you don't have to do anything really. Maintain the good grades. Go to the tournaments, ball out, and, uh, you know, you know, obviously be on social media and stuff like that, but they're going to find you, right? You're, you know, you're a 6'10 basketball player, and you attend a couple of legit camps, you, or you will go to a couple, you know, AAU tournaments, you're going to stick out. Some There are some student athletes um, that have physical abilities and, and, you know, big hands, long arms, they're tall. They're super fast, whatever it is, like the recruiting process is just different for them. And I think we have to understand that. And we have to be okay with that. That, you know, my son and daughter, they aren't some five star recruit. You know, they're not gonna have 50 offers. You know, their lane is really gonna be anywhere from three to 10 offers at, at, at best. And they're not gonna be Division One, right? So, the reason why I say it depends is because you absolutely do not need a recruiter. Um, and I'm going to throw myself in this recruiter slash consultant coach. Um, you don't really need a recruiter or a consultant if you are the parent of a, you know, a highly sought after recruit. Um, because the hardest part of the recruiting process, honestly, if we're being frank, is the getting the attention of college coaches, right? Um, getting on their radar um, and, and keeping their attention, right? That's probably the hardest part uh, that most families come across. And the reason why that's the hard part is because their son or daughters are good, but they aren't elite, right? So if you're an elite recruit, you don't need a recruiter. Two, I would say, um, why I say it depends, is I do believe the, the role that your school plays um, in in this, your high school, I should say, or not even take it a step further, your, um, 
you know, your travel, your select team plays, you know, the experience of your coach, whether it be select ball, travel ball, or your high school coach, and then this the structure you have in your program, that matters, right? So, you know, you have some, some you know, football powerhouses, right? They're an institution where every year they send out anywhere from four to eight, you know, Division I football players. Coaches at these schools have great relationships with coaches um, at the college level. Vice versa, the college coaches know that this school constantly produces top talent. So now if you are in that system and you are thriving, nine times out of ten, because of the school and because of your coach's track record, you are going to get um, some significant exposure. Additionally, as importantly, your coach has gone through the process multiple times and therefore, they are able to provide you with the guidance and with some feedback um, that, you may, that you may not otherwise get um, at other high schools. And I can use myself as an example. Now, I love my coach to death to this day. We still talk. We text. We have cigars together. Coach Ardino, when I was in high school, I'll give you, give you a perfect example. I went to a school that... We had 64 or 67 kids in my graduating class, so tiny. We played against low-caliber competition. So not only did we play against bad competition, but we were the worst of the bad competition. We won like a total of four games my last two years. So our school, for, basketball, for football purposes, had no track record of success. We played in a small conference. Um, we had no one go earn an athletic scholarship for football from our school um, at the time. And my coach, I believe, was probably like in his second, maybe third year. Um, actually, I, I think, I can't remember for sure. But I know he was relatively new to high school coach. Great guy, but when it came to college recruiting, he didn't know much about it because he really didn't experience it uh, with, any of his, uh, with, any, with any other player on our team. And our school... Again, no knock on my school whatsoever. This is the case with many high schools. They had absolutely no infrastructure, no resources really to help student athletes, particularly guide, you know, to help them navigate college recruiting. And that's still the case today with many schools. That's part of the reason why through you recruit you, shameless plug here, but that's part of the reason why we go to schools we partner with, with athletic directors to say, hey, what are you guys doing for your student athletes and their parents? And that's how we do the workshops um, for them. But so now if you belong to a school like that, you have a, a talented son or daughter, but their coach doesn't really have any experience. So you can't really lean on them for any guidance. They don't have a real track record of getting, you know, recruited um, athletes recruited. Um, hopefully, if you are playing travel ball, your your travel coach can help out with that, or the, the travel team that has a, a program. You know, there's certain AAU teams where they have a track record. Everyone knows follow this team because they got some ballers, and then they're gonna. But if you play on a, a bad AAU team, travel team, elite team, that's that's when you need. You probably want to make sure. Okay, we need we need a bit, we need a little more help here. We need somebody who can, can really, that we can lean on for advice and for some guidance. Again, that's when you want to, you may want to consider working with a recruiting coordinator. So, But so far, if your son or daughter is an, an elite athlete, you know, five-star, four-star recruit, you probably don't need to get a, a coach, uh, a recruiter or a, a consultant um, or an advisor, if you will. If they play for a powerhouse school, high school or travel team. If you have a powerhouse team that you play on that has a track record of putting kids at that next level, you probably don't need one. Um, and you really want to add to that if they, if they play for a coach who has a, a track record of putting, you know, student athletes um, at that college level. 
you know, they've been coaching for 10 years. And in that 10 year period, they have 30, 40 kids that have gone on to play, you know, at the college level on a scholarship. Um, and you can truly, and they're willing, that's another thing. They're actually willing. They have the time, the ex, the knowledge, um, and, you know, and they want to be able to help you, then yes, you don't need a recruiter, right? But other than that, oh, here's the third one, third one. If you have a son or daughter, mom and dad now, if you have a son or daughter who has gone through the recruiting process already and you went through it the first time and maybe you went at it alone and you probably made a lot of mistakes, but because you've gone through it with them, now that you have a second or a third child, you kind of know the ebbs and flows of college recruiting. I'm not saying you definitely don't need a recruiter or a consultant, but at least you've gone through the process. And, you know, you kind of have a, a firm understanding of how everything works and you have a game plan in place. I, You could probably get away with not hiring a recruiting coach, right? Or perhaps you went through it the first time and you had a recruiting coach, you got the ins and outs, you, you got educated, you learned some, you know, tricks along the way, and now the second time with your second child or your third time with your third child, you may not need to coach anymore because you've already gone through it. I think I think you're, you're cool to do that. But if you don't fit in one of those buckets, I'm just going to be very honest with you. Your son or daughter's under the radar. You don't have a support structure at the at the high school. Um, you've never gone through the process yourself with another child, or better yet, I didn't even talk about this. You, mom, dad, you never went through the college recruiting process. Let me tell you something. You need to be. You need to hire a recruiter, uh, a recruiter slash coach consultant. And where I want to make a, a a really distinction here for you is. I don't think you need to hire a recruiter to do the work for you. Meaning, don't say, okay, this recruiter is going to promote my son, you know, on social media. I see it all the time. They, you know, after the week, they put this little post together for the child. They tweet it out, and I guess like one like. But they say they're promoting your son or daughter. Like, there's no, hey, I'm not trying to disparage these companies. That that's their, That's what they do. Me personally, I think, that's not really doing anything for your son or daughter. Um, you know, so those services, I wouldn't even, they call themselves recruiters. But what I'm saying is that there are other ones that say, hey, we're going to reach out to schools on your behalf. You don't need that. And that's where I draw a line. That's where I separate from them. Meaning, I don't think you need to hire somebody to send out emails on your son or daughter's behalf. I don't think you need to join some platform, build a, f a, a free profile um, that says, you know, you get, you know, you get to email coaches from the platform or you get to know when they're looking at your platform. That's all. No, I don't believe in any of that. What I do believe in, though, is making sure you get guidance, particularly mom and dad. And this is what Jeff said, the parent who I recruit, uh, who I interviewed two weeks back on his episode. He said this, the student athlete doesn't necessarily need a recruiter. It's the parents who need somebody to bounce ideas off of, to ask their questions to, right? You just have a lot of questions. And what many people do is they belong on Facebook groups or they turn to Google. They may read all these articles. And here's the thing. College recruiting is different for every single student athlete. No recruiting experience is the same. So trying to get advice from other parents, I'm not saying don't do it at all. I'm saying it can definitely be of help to you. But there's so many variables that you can't account for. Is your son or daughter as good as their son or daughter was? Do you have better grades? Do you have a better, do you have, you know, are you more financially, you know, equipped to possibly pay a little bit more for your son or daughter's education than somebody else's, right? So another family may have made a decision purely off of money, lack thereof, whereas you may say, hey, you know what? We have a little bit more in savings and we, we've budgeted, we, make, we do well financially. 
we can pay a little bit more to send our son. So now the, the whole situation changes in how you approach college recruiting. What level does your son or daughter want to play? What sport? What position? What part of the country do you want to live in? Do you play for a good team? Do you play for a bad team? Like there are so many variables that makes it impossible for you to get the answers you need from other parents. And what you should be looking to do as a parent, particularly if this is your first time going through this, right? Because there are a lot of things you can do in life where you can do a do-over. You can make a mistake. You know what? No problem. We do it again the second time. All right? We can, we can make those. We can tweak it. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, make it bigger than it really is. But college recruiting, unfortunately, for student athletes particularly, they only get one shot at this, like me. I had, I got one shot. Well, technically, I got two because I went to, I graduated high school, I went to Boston University, and then after my freshman year, they cut the football program, and then I went through the recruiting, the recruiting process again, and I chose Northeastern. So yes, technically, you can go through it two times, or if you're a, school, a student athlete, you go through it, you know, out of high school, junior college, and then you go. Um, do it again after junior college to go to a school. Fine. But you know what I'm saying? You have basically, you know, from your sophomore year of high school through like your second year of junior college where you can go through the college recruiting process. But for the most part, just work with me here, people. For the most part, you only get to navigate and go through the recruiting process one time as a student athlete. And there are a number of mistakes you can possibly make along the way that can derail you. And even if it does work out, if you do get a scholarship, if you do end up getting a full ride, I can tell you right now, if you, if you, if you talk to a number of college athletes, former college athletes, many of them regret their decision. Sure, they went to college, they got a full ride, but maybe they went to school and their experience was terrible. They played for three different coaches. You know, they, they play three different positions because they got switched around all the time. They didn't get any real playing time. Uh, the campus life wasn't, wasn't there. They were homesick all the time, right? There's a number of things that, that played into it. I mean, at the end of the day, if all you're saying is it's a success if I go to college for free, well, then, then so be it. But if you're looking to get more out of your college experience, then you really need to make sure you are getting – advice and guidance, A, from somebody who has been there and done that, who they've done what you're trying to accomplish, right? So if I want to run a marathon, right, and I need to start learning how to run a marathon, how to navigate running a marathon, I'm not going to hire someone who's never run a marathon or who, you know, maybe they they're a fast runner. They they can they can run fast. They, you know they run the hundred yard dash really fast, but they're not a, a long distance runner. They've never run a marathon. I'm not gonna hire them. I'm not gonna work with them. I'm not gonna seek them seek them out for advice. I'm gonna align myself with a coach who has gone through a marathon. You want to start a business. You're gonna surround yourself with other entrepreneurs, or you may. Get yourself an accountability coach, someone who's going to keep you on track. But that person is going to be someone who has gone through it before. Right? So as parents, you need to go into this understanding that your number one job is to support your son or daughter. The best way to support your son or daughter is to, to, to have the knowledge, to know what to do, when to do it. And then take that knowledge and then help keep your son or daughter on track, right? And I just think one way you can do this is for you to work directly with a coach or slash recruiter who can lay out a game plan for you and your student athlete from start to finish. And then not only do they lay out the game plan, but along the way, maybe you're going to a camp. You're going on an official visit. You're, you're starting to narrow down the schools that you're considering. That individual can say, well, have you thought about this? The coach I'm saying now. Have you thought about that? Did you ask him this question? Right? 
and not only are you getting that advice, but it's also coming from a source of, you know, it's unbiased advice, right? I think that's really important too. Um, you want to get that. You want to get that advice that um, is unfiltered, unbiased, and it just comes from a source of, you know, of, you know, authenticity. Um, so that's why I do believe for the majority of you who are listening and for the majority of families who are going through the college recruiting process, you really should consider working with, and I'm not going to say a recruiter because I don't think you need a recruiter. You don't need, and I don't care who you are, you do not need a recruiter to reach out to coaches on your behalf. First of all, most coaches don't want anything to do with recruiters. You don't need them to post stuff on social media on your behalf. Right? You, don't, you don't need them to tweet stuff on your behalf. What you need is you need to take control and do it yourself, market yourself, be proactive, reach out to coaches, call them, email them, text them, follow them on social media, go to the camps, all that stuff. You need to do all that yourselves as a family. You got to be proactive and you got to take control. But within that framework, you need a game plan. You need somebody, hopefully, who has gone through it, who can provide you with, it's like a coach, right? A coach in basketball, coach in football. We don't just roll up the ball. We all know how to play basketball. We all know how to play football. I'm talking about the high school level here. Um, you know how to play. You know how to play soccer. But you have the coach in place to help point you in a direction that hopefully leads to success. And that's what you want to have if you're a parent of a student athlete uh, going through it. So if your son or daughter is an under-the-radar recruit, if maybe you play at a school who doesn't really have a track record of putting kids um, in, in college to play sports on an athletic scholarship, um, you know, if it's your first time going through it as a parent, then I really do encourage you to consider um, working with a coach. And if it's me, great. If I can be that, if I can be that resource to you, I'm honored and I'm humbled. Um, and you can, we can connect. I'll be happy to help you out. Just visit yourecruityou.com. But if it's not me, do your due diligence. Ask other parents um, in your community, um, other teammates, if if they've worked with somebody, who they recommend. Um, but uh, you definitely want to make sure uh, you get that help. Um, and again, particularly if you belong to a school, and I know this is the case, and it's unfortunate, but budgets and whatever the case may be, but most high schools, they aren't doing anything for the student athletes. Yeah, you know, they're just trying to, the student, you know, they sign the national letter of intent, they get recruited, no thanks to the school, and I'm not knocking the school, but no little thanks to the school. You know, they're going to put the little table out there with all the student athletes, you know, and they invite the news cameras to come and watch the national signing day and that's cool but we really sit back and you listen like well wait a minute like we did all the work ourselves right and that's what i know so many of you families are going through today you're like we're not really getting the help that we need um and you're kind of just winging it and college recruiting is not something you want to wing um so if i could be of help to you um you recruit you can be of, of any help to you uh if you want also us to, if you're an athletic director or if you're a coach listening to this and you want to connect with us to, to come in, talk to your team, talk to your athletic department. We even talk to counselors on how to, to help student athletes. You know, please reach out. Um, but uh, do your homework, families. Um, this is an exciting time, right? There's only 7% of high school student athletes that get to go on to play at that next level. Uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, and I don't want you to just go to college and, and get, you know, a scholarship. I truly want you to go to college and have an amazing experience. Um, and uh, if I can be of help to you, I, I'd love to do so. Um, but until next time, I am your college recruiting coach and host, Quito Delgado, reminding you that college recruiting starts with you. What steps are you taking today to earn an athletic scholarship tomorrow.